think this is going to be a, an exciting decade and all of us have seen how technology has played a role in the last 30, 40 years. And when things do come together, it can create an exponential impact or compounding impact and that can be very disruptive for our lives and it can be challenging and it can be exciting and all put together the theme summarized as celebrating the AA future. And I also want to take a moment to talk about Scient. We are a, a largest engineering company out of Hyderabad and happy to be part of ICF for many years. And uh, we are probably the largest tech company headquartered out of Hyderabad at $3 billion market cap. I'm really happy to be leading this company into the future of technology. And also if you look at in terms of history and in terms of what happened in the last 150 years and the industrial revolution which is led by steam turbines to electricity and in the last 50 years led by the information era, the industrial era changing to information era and this is led by information and computing and what was seen as a CPU, the central process unit and was there for almost 50-55 years. And what has changed in the last 20 years? And if you also look at the change that has happened from a PC client server era into web internet and moving to mobile cloud and now to AI, this is a natural evolution because if you look at the data that is generated in the last two years is almost 80% of the data that is ever generated in the last 50 years. So this is not a surprise that there is a new technology which is really trying to make it more easy to consume. I think that's the biggest change. I think AI has been there for the last 40, 50 years when the compute was in place, when maths was really talked about across many academia. And now the real point is it is getting democratized and it is something that all of us can consume. What was seen as the biggest change in the last two years, I would really call out as chat GPT as well as NVIDIA. I think I would really say both in the same sentence because one cannot exist without the another. And what was seen as the compounding effect, and if you listen to Janssen, the CEO of uh, NVIDIA, he talks about million times change that happened in the last 10 years or in a decade. If you really look at in terms of price, power and performance of compute as well as software. I think the AI got enhanced with the kind of infrastructure that NVIDIA was able to put together. And NVIDIA's stock has gone up probably by 1,700% in the last 24 months. And somebody was saying that in the last 70 trading session, it added about $10 billion in every trading session. And imagine the power of infrastructure that is required for everyone to consume artificial intelligence. The interesting aspect of this data explosion that happened and the software that is getting smarter and the infrastructure that is going to be put in place will be significantly disruptive across economies, governments, academia, as well as for enterprises and consumers. And the biggest change that all of us need to look at when you wake up in the morning, are you excited about AI? What is it going to disrupt? How do you think we are going to get ready for it? I think it is like having two elements a day. What can you consume? What can you learn about AI today? And the kind of change that has happened, the CPUs which are used in the data centers, the install base is about trillion dollars. This is likely to grow to $3 trillion. But interestingly, the significant incremental growth of $2 trillion will happen with high performance compute or advanced compute. And this is going to power the infrastructure need for the AI explosion. Where do you think AI would have an impact? I think 80% jobs will have 10 to 20% productivity or simplification, while 20% jobs will have more than 80 to 90% disruption, so which may not exist maybe in the next 5 to 10 years. Whether it is about writers, whether it is about underwriters for insurance companies, and a lot of them would probably get disrupted and probably the banking jobs significantly would get disrupted. And what is going to happen is the hyperscalers will have a huge advantage of trying to really grow bigger. And every hyperscaler is working on creating their own silicon. 
because they believe it is going to be super expensive for them to use nvidia so everybody believes they need to really get their infrastructure in terms of cloud to be supported by their own silicon infrastructure so the changes that are going to be seen whether it is on silicon whether it is on the data centers whether it is on cloud and whether it is on the software that is going to run on top of that and combined with what is going to happen on the edge whether it is on the smartphones or pc or laptops or whether it is on 5g and i think this is the combination of technologies coming together and that's the decade that we are in and we have started seeing 5g being rolled out in many countries and there are already about 350 to 400 million plus consumers who are consuming 5g today and the enterprises are upgrading their system and imagine the power of if you are able to move the data from edge to cloud seamlessly and that's going to be enabled by 5g and this is going to be significantly disruptive for every one of us and where do you see the use cases where do you see significant impact that is going to happen whether it is about text or image or audio or video or autonomous systems in the form of cars mining or in the form of robotics and iot i think all of them will have a significant change the industrial ai is here to stay and that's going to be significantly change how the businesses are run and the democratization of ai beyond tech companies into every form of life and the biggest thing that i am really personally excited about is ai for science whether it is about biology chemistry and some of the examples quoted by satya nadella when he was in india last week and he was talking about how to really reduce a lithium consumption by 70% in the batteries and which can produce the same performance and this is enabled by a national lab in us and working along with the battery manufacturer and he was talking about they created a prototype they tested it they validated it can you really produce a battery which is 70% lesser lithium and imagine the impact that this can have in the form of drug discovery or in the form of new proteins new molecules that can be discovered and the kind of diseases that can be uh, uh, eradicated in the next 10 20 years or can be used to cure and this is significantly disruptive and this is going to be an exciting future and if you really start seeing the kind of scale that is likely to happen if gpt chat gpt 3.5 was expected to have an iq of 130 this is 2023 and imagine when it gets to 160 which is the iq level of einstein or if it goes beyond that and we are going to see lot more power of ai helping us to live more safe more healthy and more productive i think this is going to be the future that we are really excited about and where do you see the use cases of ai being applied whether it is employee experience whether it is customer experience customer support product support or whether it is about reimagining the business processes and also driving the new form of innovation i think every traditional business or legacy business today can be completely disrupted across many segments this is going to be the beauty of what ai can do it's not about just staying with the tech companies but permeation of this technology across all the segments the future is going to be led by whether it is ag tech or health tech or industrial tech and all of them will have a significant role of ai to play it is not just about the ai for language i think if the gst has created india as one single market and can ai really integrate india as very powerful potent weapon of really be language agnostic and this can really create a significant opportunity for many businesses be it on startups or deep tech companies or in terms of uh, enterprise uh, companies from india the ai for science is a fascinating thing because you can compress last 200 300 years of whether it is biology or chemistry or any research that has been done in the next 20 years it can probably process all the data of what has been done or all the research that has been done in the last 250 years so you can really see that exponentiality of how it is going to compress this by 1 is to 10 and this is going to be a fascinating future that i am personally excited about it is not just about the large language models i think it is going to be the small language models it is also going to be tiny uh, language models and llm slm tlm and all of them will enable 
A being democratized not just at the enterprise level but also at the consumer level and not just at the data center or cloud, it can probably be brought to laptops or even for smartphones. I think this is going to be the power of opportunity that exists and if all of us have a role to play, it can probably cut across all the areas of TLM, SLM and LLM and not just leaving it to LLM which is going to be a big boys club because I'm sure hyperscalers would dominate and the kind of investments that people are talking about. I think Google is expected to make about $50 billion investment in 2024 just to upgrade their infrastructure and imagine if this is going to be close to about four to five hundred billion dollars that all the hyperscalers are going to invest it's not a small money it's not something that is easy for anyone to really replicate that the another interesting aspect is one sixth of the talent on ai comes from india and 25 percent of incremental workforce globally is going to come from india like what we have done from wired telephone to wireless or mobile can we really leapfrog taking opportunity of AI can the businesses be reimagined differently can we build the future for India which can also be exported to the world I think that is a fascinating future I'm really excited about what do we do as leaders when you are really trying to think about where can I apply what do what are my priorities how do I really make my company employees to be skilled and ready for the future. I think this is about every CEO or every CTO of every leader in any enterprise should start adopting it. They should become the early adopters. What did we do at Scient? We said the top 10% of the leaders have to complete a 101 Coursera course on generative AI before end of March. And we really want all of them to do at least one project on their own, whichever way that they can really impact, whether it is their own uh, associate experience, project management experience, whether applying this for risk management, whether it is trying to really work on the software engineering, software development, and they can really choose, they really have to do at least one project in the next two months. The second aspect is, I'm a co-pilot user of Microsoft. I'm not sure how much effort it made me to be productive, but I'm still observing the kind of meetings it summarizes and the kind of key actions, key things that you get out of the meeting is amazing. I think this is just starting point and I still want to see how is it going to really make me productive and really get about 20-25% of my time to be freed up. And that would really help us to be more focused on some of the strategic initiatives. And also it is about like this intelligent quotient, there is going to be an AIQ which is the artificial intelligent quotient which is going to be very important for every enterprise, every leader and every middle management and it is very critical for all of them to embrace the change and this change is coming at a pace that we couldn't have imagined before. And also build on, start using it, deploy it at scale and whether it is about internal for your own consumption or for external for customers and we are seeing significant change that is happening on both sides. If I take for example with the customers, whether it is about sales and marketing, whether it is about service, whether it is about software engineering and development, whether it is about SecOps, I think all of them could be significantly, productivity can be enhanced with 20 to 40 percent. And if you also look at your own internal functions of associate experience, HR, IT ops, and there is significant amount of leverage that can be brought in with AI. Net-net, can we create an impact of 10% of India's GDP to come from AA-led businesses? Not just tech-led businesses, we are already at 8%. In the next decade, can we add 10% more to take the tech business of 8% to 18%? I think that's a potential that all of us are sitting on. Really want to take this opportunity to thank ICF for inviting me. To stay informed about the startup ecosystem, subscribe to my startup TV.